I used to work a lot with turntables, doing kind of quite experimental, abstract live performances with several turntables. And the idea of making it uh, fully kind of rhythmical and making dance music with this kind of setup wasn't even in my mind then. Often you go to see live electronic music and there isn't much to see. You'll, you'll be able to still kind of, um, you can kind of ascertain from the performer's facial expressions maybe that they're kind of doing something, that they're active, kind of making changes and interacting. Part of the reason why people like going to watch live bands is if you see a drummer playing drums you can tell you know every time he hits the snare drum you can hear the snare drum so it kind of uh, there's something satisfying about that to watch I think. If something isn't in the right position it's not, just not going to work and I'm not going to be able to change that halfway through. Likewise I have to do things in a certain order because each layer is specialised to make a specific type of sound. Part of what sets it apart from electronic music recorded in a uh, more conventional way is that it's prone to kind of failure and, and mistakes. I don't want to improve it too much because the last thing I want it to be is to be a slick, well-oiled machine because then it loses all its character. With mechanical techno I, I do like the intimacy of it really and the fact that people seem to get more out of it when they're really up close and really seeing the detail and working out how it works. Dance music, electronic music, it's kind of functional, it's made for dancing, you don't really need to be watching how it's made because you know by by definition really you should be dancing to it instead and kind of concentrating on that. <laughs> 